so Adam abstained from saying my name because in Portuguese it sounds weird. I'm Rodrigo Giron Serrão. I was a summer intern at Dialogue this summer, and I would like to thank Dialogue for trusting me because we, we never met in person. But as the world changes, I guess these things also change. And thank you for inviting me here today. So in three simple words, I am sorry, I don't have such a long history as Ron. I'm just a Portuguese mathematics student. I'm finishing my, my master's degree right now. And today I will tell you about the main projects I worked on, which was re reworking mastering dialogue APL. And I think I will turn on my camera to show you what this really is. So this is the this is the Mastering Dialogue APL book I've been working on. It's really big. It's 800 pages long. I can't know from personal experience, but I've been told it's great at adjusting the height of some monitors, but I wouldn't know. And I've worked on this book for, for three months. So why did the book need some reworking? Well, for a couple of reasons. The book was, I assume many of you have known, have heard about the book. I, I assume also plenty of, plenty of you have read the book. And if this were a live presentation, I would ask you to raise your hands, but I can't really see you. So I'll just believe my own words. And the book was written in 2009 or published in 2009, so 11 years ago. And that's a lot of time for something related to software. At the time, Dialog APL was in version 12.0 and it's currently at 18.0. So six new major releases happened. And also some of the tools that the book covers, because for those of you who don't know, Mastering Dialog APL is a great tutorial on Dialog APL and some of the tools that come with it, at least some of the tools that came with it in 2009. So some things really became outdated. And also, obviously, some new tools also appeared, things that have been covered today, things that will be talked about tomorrow, and things that are yet to be born. So these should probably also be addressed in the de facto standard book that introduces people to Dialogue APL. And also, the format is outdated. And this might be controversial because books are books and some people will say that books never get out of date and some people really like holding a book in their hands and I'm not saying that's not right. I'm just saying that as time changes, as time passes by and as things evolve, new formats become available and maybe those could be explored because I don't know if you know, but there's a PDF version of the book that's available online for free. And let's be honest, a PDF that is 800 pages long is really hard to manage. I've, I'm almost done with university and I was able to pass all my courses without ever holding a book in my hand. I work with PDFs only, but trust me when I say that 200 pages is way too much. Okay, so now that we have this settled, what is it that we are looking for? So, okay, we have a problem, as in the book is great, but needs some reworking. So what do we want from this reworked version of the book? There's a couple of things we would like. Of course, we would like to update the, the language and the tools. So if we are writing a tutorial, the tutorial better work for the most recent for the most recent version of APL and for the most recent tools that would be really nice and one of the main one of the main things we are looking for while we are at it might as well find something find a solution that is easy to maintain and to keep updated because reworking a book from scratch is a lot of work i'm doing that i worked I spent almost all of my hours at Dialog working on this, and of course, I got nowhere near finished. And even though it's 
it takes some work to update things every time a new version comes out or every time a tool is updated, it's much easier than to rework the whole thing from scratch. And also, we would like something that looks good online so that people can go online and read the book as they can right now. But we would like something that is not a really huge PDF. And also, to please everyone that prefers a printed book, we would like something that can be printed. And also, if, if we find a magical solution, we would also like something that is able to integrate well with the new dialog site, maybe the new TriAPL website, and whatever we find in the ecosystem that makes sense to integrate with APL and with the, with the Mastering Dialog APL book. And I'll show you in a second why it makes sense to consider integration of the book with the new dialogue website and with the new TriAPL website. So I'll show you the solution we found. And my screen sharing should be working. So I'm assuming you can see this. This, this is my browser. I opened my browser. And you can see here on the top left corner, it says Jupyter. And the chat notification is probably telling me that you can see it, hopefully, because I can't open the chat. OK, so <laughs> what I was saying is, this is the interface I started using to rework the book. And what is this? This is a Jupyter notebook. And I will leave all relevant. Gosh, what's this? I think someone just rang at my door, which is weird because I live alone. Hopefully it'll go away because I, I'm not expecting anyone. So the Jupyter Notebook is something that allows you to type code interactively. For example, I can type three plus three and I hope everyone agrees the answer should be six, but I can also type in text in a markdown notation. And I can write some prose over here and I can have text and code mixed together. And if I put this up online, people can download it, can open it up and can read the text, which would be the description of some APL primitive or of some APL tool. And then they can execute the examples for themselves and tweak them to see if they agree with, say, the understanding they made of the explanation. So this is a really interesting technology and the notebooks are being hosted online so people can download them and I think it's safe to assume that eventually they will move out of my personal GitHub repository, but, but that is where they are right now. And then we use this tool that transforms these Jupyter notebooks into an HTML version that is much more friendly to read than a PDF. So this is the temporary website of this reworked version that is still a work in progress. And you can see here, this is the landing page. It just has the original authors. And then you can open the chapters and you may even recognize this as the first chapter of the book. And you can see the table of contents right here. And the book is really great. So whenever I'm able to, I just leave things as the original textbook says. For example, if you if you were to open the book in this subsection, you would see it looks exactly the same. Okay, I mean, it doesn't look exactly the same because the colors are different and etc. cetera, but, but the content is exactly the same. But sometimes new things need to be written. For example, the chapter on installing Dialog APL simply assumes you are using a Windows machine. And nowadays that's no longer true. So we talk about installing the software on Microsoft Windows, Linux, Mac OS, we talk about typing APL glyphs because also I'm being completely honest with you, with you. When I started with APL, it was so confusing that I couldn't use a standard keyboard to type the glyphs. And I think I uninstalled and reinstalled Dialog APL three or four times on my machine before I got everything right. So there's a new section talking about that and talking about some of the options. So yeah, lots of things can be kept the same and the book is really good. So 
when that's the case, I just copy the text and the examples. Otherwise, we write new content. For example, new exercises, more verbose solutions to the exercises, etc. You can just explore this on your own. I don't have to share the whole book with you. And also something that's it's still very ugly, but it's a work in progress, is the PDF that gets produced out of this. So I write the Jupyter Notebooks. By the way, I think I can show you. This is what a Jupyter Notebook, this is the notebook of the chapter I just showed, the introduction chapter. You can see there's the pros in here and you can, you can edit it. For example, there's a link in here and then the examples and the code that gets run when the book is generated. And then because we want to print this, we also have a PDF version of this. Now bear with me for a second. This is not, this is the original PDF opened in a specific section. And this is the PDF that we currently generate. And it doesn't look great, but it's something that needs some work. And it is currently depending on the tool we are using. So I don't mean this as an excuse. I'm just saying that we haven't put much work into this yet. So yeah, it doesn't look great, but don't worry. This will be something we will work on. And then you can have your printed Mad Apple book. And then I think because of the nerves, I'm, I think I just rushed through the presentation. So I'm at the point where I say there's a lot of work to be done because I only covered, I think one, quarter of the book and I haven't reached the parts that need greater reworks because those are the ones with um, with the tools and I think those will take much more work and so I hope to get back on working on this in 2021 because right now I really have to finish my master thesis and yeah, if you have any suggestions, if you think the book is looking great or it doesn't look decent, feel free to, to let us know so, so that we can work on that. And thanks a lot for your attention. I think there's plenty of time if you have any questions specifically for me or for someone else, I guess. And then you can find all the relevant links in here and those will be shared with you. So someone says it looks promising, referring to the book, and that's great. Thanks. I put a lot of work into this, so I'm glad it looks promising. And then the new PDF, someone asks if the new PDF supports hyperlinks. And yes, it does. So the new PDF is built by converting the notebooks into LaTeX documents, and LaTeX documents support links so yeah i'm trying to find so here's a hyperlink so the new pdf does support hyperlinks yes it does thank you so much um connor has one more question uh, which is whether it would be allowed to fork the book on github and say adapted to use a different language but the same book same example basically uh, yes so if the question is can you fork maybe i missed the point of the question so the, the book is online and i'm struggling but to open the, the where it could be adapted for the programming languages then then dialog apl the same book if if it's possible to fork it I would assume so, if it makes sense for the programming language in question. So the, the things are right here. You can fork the repository and just rework the notebooks. I think it's just a matter of adapting the contents and the, explanation, the explanations to the languages themselves. And then, oh boy, so a bunch of questions right now. Um, so someone asked to show the web version again. So this is the web version, unless they want a specific page I think maybe, sorry for change, keep, I keep changing things. This is a nice example, some code and some prose. Someone asks about the setup of the kernel because Jupyter Notebook doesn't, isn't shipped with APL, nor 
does APL ship with Jupyter kernel. So you can just download the dialog APL kernel from the link that's in the end of my presentation. And it's in the repository of dialog, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the correct repository. Yeah. Also, are you cutting content from the original 800 page book? No, Connor, I'm not. I'm reading every single word. And whenever it makes sense, I just keep it as is. Otherwise, I rework it or even sometimes write new chapters or new sections. For example, a new chapter on tacit programming will be included. So actually, the book will grow, not become shorter. Okay, and now also someone asks, what is the future of this project? I would love to replace my copy of Mastering Dialog APL with one representative of the current revision. So I'm not sure I understand the question. The future, so the objective is to have a completely updated book. So that's where, where we are headed. It will take some time. I have no idea how much time and I wouldn't like to commit to a specific deadline because I'm terrible at predicting things like this. But we are looking for a complete rework. So eventually you will be able to replace your copy with a new one. No, Jay, unfortunately, I have no idea when it will come out. And then some someone made a comment about our markdown saying, um, saying there's a similar thing and that's it is pretty similar to, to Jupyter Notebooks and it's something that is built into R. You can just write prose and run examples and then generate HTML pages from it. So yeah, it is pretty similar. Okay, so and there's a question that still remains in here. So maybe I didn't address it correctly. It mentions Docker and I didn't have to do anything fancy with Docker containers and whatnot. I just installed the APL kernel on my machine. But that reminds me that hopefully we will be able to integrate the HTML version. So this right here with something fancy, either a Docker image instance, I don't know the correct word or try APL in that you can just press some button and execute the code completely online. So currently you can copy this code, but you can't execute it and it would be really nice if you could. So that's also something to look for. Yes, it will be possible to download the HTML file and read the book offline. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you can save HTML pages from the web. So save page as, I guess that will work. You can even download the notebooks and read them or go to and read them offline, yes. And yes, David, there will be a book published for purchasing. That's the whole point of F, all of this work is to find something that works well online and printed. And Hopefully you will, be, you will even be able to build your own book because if this really grows, I don't think you will want a 1600 pages long book. So you may even have the possibility of picking the chapters you want or the chapters you need and only print those. Okay, I, I think we have to stop here to keep the schedule, um, but uh, we can keep answering the questions um, <laughs> in the Q&A and there will be time later tonight to answer questions as well. Thank you so much.